Quarterback controversies aren't anything new in football. We've seen plenty of instances over the last few seasons where teams have had to make the difficult decision of choosing one quarterback over another. And while sometimes these outcomes may anger their fan bases, oftentimes they can even split a locker room apart. Time and time again, we've seen these sort of controversies dominate the headlines and distract the team, whether it be Drew Brees vs. Phillip Rivers, Tom Brady vs. Jimmy Garoppolo, or even Aaron Rodgers vs. Brett Favre, one thing is for certain, it's actually not always as bad of a situation to be in. That being said, one of the biggest quarterback controversies happened in 1987 and lasted for an incredible six years. The Joe Montana-Steve Young debate was one that almost tore apart the 49ers locker room during their dynasty. So to get a better understanding of this whole ordeal, we're going to travel back in time to when it all began. Long before Steve Young led the 49ers to much success, the Hall of Fame signal color was deemed a bust. Prior to donning the red and gold, Young played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the LA Express of the USFL. In 1984, Steve decided to forgo the NFL draft, electing to join the upstart United States Football League. LA Express owner J. Willie Moldenberg lured the youngster to the new league by offering him a four-year deal for $40 million that would be paid as an annuity over 43 years. After two seasons in the USFL, the league seized operations in 1986 and Young bought out his contract and signed for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who made him the first pick in the supplemental draft. Steve Young's time in Tampa Bay was a period to forget. Tampa at the time were an abysmal franchise that were in the midst of what would be 12 consecutive 10 loss seasons. As a starter, the former BYU QB went 3-16 and threw 11 touchdowns along with 21 interceptions. And after the Bucks finished in last place for the second consecutive season, they had their eyes set on a new quarterback in the draft in Miami Hurricanes' Vinny Testaverde. Now while Steve was partly to blame for his dreadful time in Tampa, most of it should shoulder on the organization as they had not surrounded the youngster with players in the skill position. Oftentimes in games, you would see Steve scrambling around off script just trying to make a play. After the 1986 season, there was one head coach who was interested in Steve Young. San Francisco 49ers Bill Walsh. However, they already had a quarterback at the helm and not just any quarterback. They had Joe Montana, who's one of the faces of the league. A man who at this point had led the 49ers franchise to two Super Bowl titles, but the only issue was he had just come off his second back surgery. In week one of the 86 season, Joe had suffered a severe back injury that required immediate surgery. At the time, this wasn't just some ordinary operation, but in fact, Montana's doctors even suggested that he retire or at least sit out the entire season. And as many of you know, the hits quarterbacks had taken back in those days were nothing compared to what we see today. In the end, Joe ended up going into his doctor's orders and actually came back in week 10 against the Rams. But in hindsight, he probably should have sat out the season and avoided the crushing hit from Jim Burt in the playoff game against the Giants. And now put yourself in Bill Walsh's position. He was a perfectionist and a meticulous individual who thought of absolutely everything with regards to his job with the 49ers. He was the coach who only wanted to have his best players during their prime or would offload them a year before the performances declined. So here he has Joe Montana who had just undergone two back surgeries with doctors initially advising him to retire. However, his uncanny vision and eye for talent to see what no other coaches in the league saw in Steve Young offered him another option. A talented, gifted young quarterback with great athletic ability who was just in the wrong setting in Tampa Bay. The Bucks had not done anything to help put a strong team around Steve, so Walsh's thinking was, if he joined the 49ers, it would give him a real opportunity to flourish and showcase his talents. So a deal was made where the 49ers would receive Steve Young in exchange for San Francisco's second and fourth round draft picks. Steve came in under the assumption that he would take over the reins at quarterback as Bill had basically hinted that Montana wouldn't recover from the surgery. And this is how the quarterback controversy began in San Francisco. During training camp, Steve arrived and saw Montana throwing the ball around without even so much of a struggle. And it's at this point when he realized getting the starting job wouldn't be so easy. Entering the 1987 campaign, Joe was the starting quarterback with Steve Young as a backup. During a Week 7 game against the Saints, the former BYU QB was substituted in for Montana who had injured his knuckle earlier while holding the ball for kicker Ray Wershing during his practice drills. Young during his cameo appearance did fairly well moving the ball with his legs before throwing a 46-yard TD pass to Jerry Rice to take the lead. 
However, his day would be cut short after being diagnosed with a concussion and Montana came back to finish out the rest of the game. Joe would start the next four games, but in the fourth game against the Bears, Montana bumped his knee with running back Roger Craig and had to leave the game due to injury. So in stepped Steve Young again, who proceeded to have the game of his life. The quarterback connected with Jerry Rice for three touchdowns and one to Dwight Clark as he led the 49ers to a 41-0 crushing defeat over the Chicago Bears. Young would finish out starting the remaining two games of the season with wins over the Falcons and Rams and in the end he looked rather impressive for the year throwing for 10 touchdown passes with zero picks and a passer rating of 120.8. San Francisco ended the year going 13-2 in the strike shortened NFL season for the number one overall record in the league. This set up a divisional matchup against the Vikings where a healthy Joe Montana returned to lead the 49ers. This game was pretty much dubbed as a huge mismatch as San Fran had the number one offense along with a number three scoring defense. The 49ers went into the game as an 11 point favorite even though the Vikings had won their last two meetings and had just come off a week earlier pulling an upset over the six and a half point favorite Saints in the wild card round. The first quarter saw both teams exchange field goals, however in the second quarter, Minnesota took a commanding 20-3 lead going into the half. San Francisco had no answer for the Vikings D as they doubled on Jerry and their front four were pressuring Montana all throughout the first half. On top of that, it didn't help when Ray Wershing missed a 26-yard field goal right before the half. This was getting to be a long day for Bill Walsh, who seemed to be getting really frustrated on the sidelines. As the second half started, the 49ers got a lucky bounce as Jeff Fuller picked off Wade Wilson and ran the ball in for six. Minnesota immediately answered right back with a five-yard TD score from Hassan Jones, giving them a 17-point cushion again. After both teams exchanged punts, it's at this point where the quarterback controversy first arose during a game as Walsh decided to pull Montana in favor of backup quarterback Steve Young to try and shake things up. With the score 27-10, this would be a critical point seeing Montana taken off the field, especially in a playoff game where everything was on the line. For comparisons, this would be like Bill Belichick benching Brady in favor of Garoppolo in the 2016 divisional round against the Texans. So you can understand how Joe felt getting pulled and not having an opportunity to lead his team back in the second half. And why wouldn't he feel this way? He was a two-time Super Bowl winner and a two-time Super Bowl MVP and the face of the franchise. That being said, when Young got in the game, he actually got the offense rolling. The first was Steve's 5-yard TD run where he evaded about 3 Vikings chasing him down to find the end zone. Then in the 4th quarter, Young connected on a 16-yard TD pass to John Frank to bring the 49ers within 9 points. However, it would be too little too late as the Vikings hung on to the victory and advanced to the conference championship game where they faced off with the then Washington Redskins. And this would mark the third straight playoff game where the 49ers got disposed of quite easily. As a result, this left 49ers owner Eddie DiPartolo Jr. in a tough position as he gave the green light to 49ers GM Carmen Policy to give Walsh the axe. DiPartolo felt this was a wasted opportunity for the franchise as they were the clear runaway Super Bowl favorites. But in the end, after a back and forth between owner and GM, they instead agreed to keep Walsh on as head coach, but stripped him of his title of president of the 49ers, a move that didn't sit well with the head coach. Following this demotion and the playoff loss to the Vikings, Bill Walsh in the following 1988 offseason decided to experiment with his quarterback predicament. He began to pit his two quarterbacks against each other as he made an announcement in the offseason addressing the issue of the quarterback controversy he had on his hands and that he was basically going to let both players fight for the starting position knowing he would get the best out of both players. You can understand there was probably a lot of tension between the two QBs as they were now basically fighting for that coveted starting position. These were two competitive quarterbacks who didn't want to sit on the sidelines and watch the other take their snaps. Nonetheless, both were consummate professionals and it wasn't like they wouldn't speak or talk to one another. In fact, if anything, they would slowly grow resentment towards their head coach instead. In the season opener against the Saints, Montana got the nod and finished the game throwing three touchdowns in a 34-33 win. Joe got injured late in the game with a bruised elbow and was relieved with his backup coming in. And due to this injury, Steve Young started the following Week 2 game against the Giants. Young struggled in the game as he fumbled the ball on his first three possessions which left Bill no choice but to bring on Montana in the second half. With less than a minute left in the game, Joe Montana orchestrated a comeback as he hit Jerry Rice for 77 yards for the win. 
in a Week 8 game that saw Walsh's West Coast offense go up against the Bears' vaunted defense, Montana started but struggled all game, managing 7 points in a close nip-and-tuck affair. And down 10-9, Montana was pulled for Steve Young on the very last play on 4th and inches. However, the young QB failed to extend the drive, which resulted in a devastating loss for the 49ers that season. In the following week, Young was given the green light against the Vikings to exact revenge from their playoff loss just 10 months prior. Steve got off to a rocky start, missing throws left and right, and got sacked a total of four times, leading to home fans venting their frustration. However, late in the fourth quarter, with the team trailing by four, Young pulled off a remarkable 49-yard TD run. The QB went off script and proceeded to run awkwardly, evading countless tackles, and found his way to the end zone for the eventual winner. And slowly, those earlier boosts from the home crowd began to change the cheers of excitement. During post-game press conferences, Bill Walsh continued telling the media that Montana needed a rest and wasn't sure if he'd be 100% ready to start as Joe had picked up a few small nicks throughout the season. The following match against the Cardinals, Young was under center and led his team to a 23-0 lead halfway through the third quarter. But just as how quickly things can turn good, the same holds true when things turn sour. Phoenix mounted a comeback in the fourth quarter, and while down by six with just seconds left in the game, quarterback Neil Lomax hit Roy Green in the end zone for a 9-yard TD pass for the win. After a Week 11 loss to the Raiders, a game in which Montana started and struggled, the team was now 6-5 for the season, and the locker room increasingly began to show their frustration. When a team is winning, a lot of the issues and problems can be swept under the rug, but in the case of this 49ers team, as those losses began to pile up, by mid-November, the team began questioning their head coach. And as the story goes, the coaches all met to discuss the issues with the team, and the players had a players-only meeting led by Ronnie Lott, who dressed his teammates that they needed to stand united during this difficult period in their season. And back in the coaches' meeting, they felt the team was imbalanced as they needed to establish a clear number one quarterback to lead the team. And it's at this point where Bill Walsh placed the offense in the hands of Joe Montana. From Week 12, Montana won four of the last five games and San Francisco won the division title after grabbing wins over Washington, San Diego, Atlanta and New Orleans. Joe looked to have recovered from all his injuries throughout the season and backup quarterback Steve Young would watch his teammates from the sidelines as they entered the postseason. This San Francisco 49ers team seemed to have found a new vigor on their season as they prepared for their first playoff game, a rematch against a team that had knocked them out of the playoffs just a year ago. Montana threw three TD passes to Jerry Rice in the first half as the 49ers easily got by Minnesota 34-9. This set up an NFC Championship game where Bill Walsh's team would get a chance to exact revenge on another team in the Chicago Bears. In a cold game in Soldier Field, San Fran easily dispatched Chicago 28-3 with Joe throwing three TD passes and punched the 49ers ticket to their third Super Bowl. Super Bowl 23 was a rematch from seven years earlier as the Bengals and 49ers would face off in their quest to hoist the Lombardi Trophy. And rumors began circulating that this may be Bill Walsh's last game for San Francisco. With 3.20 left in the game, Cincinnati had taken a 16-13 lead. And from their own 8-yard line, Joe Montana mounted a drive into the red zone after hitting Jerry Rice with a 27-yard catch-and-run pass. And with only 34 seconds left in the game, Joe connected with John Taylor for 10 yards to give San Francisco the lead. The 49ers won the game and Montana leading the franchise to the third championship. And following the game during the post-game interview, Walsh broke down in tears as he was asked if this would be his last game in charge. With this Super Bowl, Montana firmly dismissed any talks of a quarterback controversy. With Walsh out, defensive coordinator George Seifert was the next head coach for San Francisco and the following couple seasons saw Young continue looking on from the sidelines. In the 89 season, Joe led San Francisco to a league-best 14-2 record while throwing for 26 touchdowns and 8 interceptions with a 112.4 passer rating, all while collecting his first league MVP honors. The former Notre Dame quarterback led his team into the playoffs and onto the Super Bowl where they steamrolled over the Denver Broncos 55-10 to capture a back-to-back -back Super Bowl with Joe grabbing MVP honors for the third time in his career. During that season, Steve Young did look impressive in the three games he started, all of which he won as he completed almost 70% of his passes while throwing 8 touchdowns to 3 interceptions. The following season, Montana continued his MVP performance as he collected his second league MVP. 
he led the 49ers to another 14-2 season and almost got them back into the Super Bowl. During this time, Young continued watching from the bench and would sporadically come into the game. And it wouldn't be until the 1991 season, four years since joining the team, Steve was thrust from a supporting role to now the lead role as Montana had gone down with an elbow injury that forced him to sit out the entire season and most of the 92 season. During this stretch, Steve got off to a rough start and midway through the season, in a game against the Falcons, a knee injury would put him back on the sidelines. Backup quarterback Steve Bono came in to replace the injured quarterback and after a loss to Atlanta and New Orleans the week after, Bono put up an impressive five game winning streak to the point where Seifert kept him in even though Young had fully recovered. It wasn't until late in a week 16 game against the Chiefs where Bono went down with an injury that ushered Young back into the game. Steve finished the season with the NFL best 101.8 passer rating despite missing five full games as he threw 17 touchdowns against eight interceptions. This was clearly a disappointing campaign as the 49ers missed the playoffs for the first time since 1982 with a 10-6 record. At the start of the 1992 season, Steve's starting position looked to be in serious doubt. On top of having to compete with Bono, Montana appeared to be close to recovering from his elbow tendon surgery. San Francisco even came close to trading Young to the Raiders, but a deal never materialized. And as it turned out, Montana did not recover in time for the start of the campaign. He'd actually missed almost the entire season up until the final game against the Lions, a game in which he played in the second half. Steve Young, however, started this season as the starting QB and put on an impressive performance throughout the season. He led San Fran to a 14-2 record for tops in the league and completed 66% of his passes, recording 25 touchdowns to 7 interceptions with a 107 passer rating. And to top it all off, he also won the league MVP. In the postseason, the 49ers faced off against Washington where Steve threw for 227 yards and 2 touchdowns and rushed for 73 yards in a 20-13 divisional playoff win. However, a loss to the Dallas Cowboys in the championship game ended their season prematurely. So now, serious questions began to arise and the quarterback controversy would emerge again as Montana was back healthy at the age of 37 and a 31-year-old Steve Young had just come off an MVP season. Fans still wanted their hero Montana, while owner Eddie DiPartolo Jr. publicly expressed that he wanted Joe to resume his role, however a rift in the locker room developed as players were split on whom they wanted at quarterback. And in the spring of 1993, at Joe's request, San Francisco traded Montana to the Kansas City Chiefs and Steve Young would now become the 49ers undisputed quarterback. And with that, the controversy that lingered amongst the Bay Area was now over. 1993, Steve Young led the 49ers to a 10-6 record and into the playoffs again where a new rivalry would emerge with Dallas. Just like in the postseason a year ago, the Cowboys defeated the 49ers in the championship game 38-21. And this was another crushing defeat for Steve who knew the only way he'd enter the hearts of the 49ers faithful would be by bringing home another championship. And that's what Steve Young set out to do. In the 1994 campaign, after acquiring Deion Sanders in free agency, the 49ers felt they had a real shot to get to the Super Bowl. Young played tremendous that season, notching his second league MVP after he threw for almost 4,000 yards along with 35 touchdowns to 10 interceptions with a passer rating of 112.8. The 49ers finished the season 13-3 for the league's best record, and during the playoffs, the road to the Super Bowl would not be an easy one for Steve. After getting by the Bears, the 49ers had to exercise their demons as they met the Cowboys again for the third consecutive time in the NFC Championship game. However, this time Steve got the best of the Cowboys as he led his team to a 38-28 victory. This set up a date with the San Diego Chargers in Super Bowl 29, where Steve etched his name in NFL lore, bringing home a fifth title to San Francisco. While the 94 season was memorable for what it brought to the city and its fans, along with the journey getting there, it also saw two quarterbacks who were front and center of the 49ers controversy go head to head in a week two matchup. Steve Young's 49ers traveled to Kansas City to take on Joe Montana's Chiefs in a reunion of two old pals. 